Hey, this is Alex. Um, in the continuing saga of the commando lock, um, I have a few more discoveries which I made while I was fiddling with the pieces after shooting the, the previous video and uh, waiting for it to edit and upload. Um, this is the, these are the internals of the lock that the, uh, what came out of this poor guy. Um, so this is the locking cam. These are the ball bearings, shackle, lock. Okay, no big deal. Um, and so the way that this operates is that the key, you have the key in the lock, except I have this upside down, um, but the key would rotate, there we go, this way, like that, um, then the ball bearings can fall in these little grooves, and the lock can open and all that good stuff, right, we're all familiar with that. Now, back to the point. So. We found this extra little part in here. So let's talk about this part. This part is the is the bit that is responsible for holding the shackle in, really. It keeps the ball bearings in place, the ball bearings keep the shackle in place. This thing fails, doesn't matter how good this cylinder is. So let's talk about that. This is made out of metal that I would call well soft. Um, this is a tension wrench. It's already got some scratches in it from my previous um, experiments, but um, I'm going to just make two start, and this is not sharpened, this is just however Southward sent it to me, right? Um, I'm just going to make two marks there, okay, and you can see right where the, right at, at 12 o'clock, that's where I just marked it. Okay, it scratches really easily with just a piece of just a piece of wiper blade, which is not a particularly hard, um, not a particularly hard metal, as far as I'm concerned. Um, definitely not as hard as these ball bearings, which nothing except for my my carbide uh, thing would would cut. So these are, in fact, pretty hard steel. Um, but we'll get to those in a minute. Now back to this. So this puzzled me that this would be, you know, soft steel given that it's how critical it is in the locking mechanism. Um, and so it occurred to me that if this is easy, to, is easy to defeat, well then that means I can probably drill out the lock. Well, that's got to be really hard, right? Because we, we already discussed all the great properties of this metal. Well, um, in fact, it's not that hard. There's a hole drilled in this same lock. Um, it's a five sixteenths hole, just about just about right to uh, to punch right through this little guy, and certainly enough to clear these ball bearings. And um, now you may say, ah, well, he must use some special tool. I did. I used my I used my Dewalt eighteen volt power drill um, and this cobalt drill bit. Ooh, cobalt. Well, it is very exotic. They they only carry it in one aisle at each of the local hardware stores, and I think to buy one of them, it's perhaps six dollars. So big investment, um, you know, a lot more expensive than bolt cutters, um, not really. Um, but uh, that in about three minutes, I timed it, cut right through there. Um, I didn't I didn't cut through the cam because I wanted to show it to you. So there's the cam. Um, so I would call this a vulnerability, guys. Um, so if Commando, if you're watching, um, I would consider making this out of a better metal. Um, maybe invest in the same or similar kind of metal you use to make your ball bearings. Um, speaking of the ball bearings, uh, where did my scribe go? There it is. Now the ball bearings, according to the literature, are made out of quote, uh, 420 hardened stainless steel. There it is right here in black and white. Let's focus. 420 hardened stainless steel. Ball bearings. Now, the last time I looked at stainless steel, um, it did not attract magnets. Um, and uh, I'm trying to find something here that is stainless steel. Um, and not succeeding, um, but anyhow, did not attract magnets. Now this is a very strong magnet, but this 
is clearly magnetic. Now, maybe, I don't know, I could be wrong. Maybe these are, in fact, stainless steel. They are hardened. The only thing that would cut them that I had was this, this carbide tip on this thing. But I just have to question whether that's really stainless steel or not. I guess I could both put in some salt water and find out. This little guy might be steel. He, he did, there's some iron in there somewhere because it kind of attracts the magnet, but not very strongly. So maybe this is the 420 stainless and this is just carbon steel, which nothing wrong with that, but could just be an error in there. Anyhow, those are the ball bearings. That's vulnerability one. Um, that's the security vulnerability. But the other thing I did while I was watching, uh, while I was waiting for the video to render, the previous video, is I was looking at their, some, of their, some of Commando's actual videos. And I noticed that they had a line of padlocks, which I don't have, which I did not buy one of, where you can actually take the shackle out. And they have all sorts of different shackles that you can put on there, different kinds, different lengths. They have long ones, short ones, fat ones, skinny ones, whatever. Um, and this other line of padlocks, the I, I can't remember what they're called, but um, they cost a dollar or two more, I think, and um, you can remove the shackles. That's pretty cool. Well, when I was looking at this cam, I thought to myself, why do they have this enormous hole on the side of the cam? Zooming back in. Why do they have this enormous hole on the side of the cam? And then I saw the video and I was like, huh, maybe my locks can do that too. So um, I reverse picked one of them and in fact if I turned the cylinder, the uh, if you turn it um, counterclockwise 90 degrees with the lock open. Sure enough, I picked it open and the, and the uh, shackle fell out. So I said to myself, well, that's kind of neat. Um, I bet I can make a key that will do that by taking a hint from Sergeant Greenleaf on their control keys and on like the, uh, um, those big military padlocks and just cut some notches in the key. So that's what I did. I actually filmed this, but it took forever because um, it I'm always very slow with that. Um, weakens the key a little bit, but if we put the key in, open the lock, rotate the shackle to there, bring the key back, and rotate it to there, aha! Shackle comes out. Pretty cool. Put another shackle in. If that's the shackle you use to do your, your penetration testing, put the, uh, put the shackle in, return this to the um, unlocked position, put that back in, pull your key out and you're done. And then of course you can just give the regular key to your your friends and they can only open the lock but they can't remove the shackle because the thing is in the way. Now the other way you could affect this change is simply to remove these two metal tabs here um, which kind of look like drill protection but they're not. Um, they have no real structural value based on our previous testing. Um, so you could just file those off or cut them off and uh, you'd have a removable shackle lock. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So maybe that's just a little bonus for those of us who are geeks and take our locks apart and if you're willing to do that then you find out that you have a removable shackle version of the same lock. I suspect it's probably more likely that they only wanted to make one type of this little cam which is reasonable. And so they made the same one and they just put the little wings there to keep you from doing that with their normal lock. At any rate, guys, uh, Commando, this, um, this cam, it's, uh, it's costing you security on your products and it's uh, possibly costing you money if people, you know, realize how simple, what the simple difference is um, between your, your products. So I would suggest enhancing this part it can't cost that much uh, to make this out of something better and maybe to have two different kinds that you use depending on the lock. So there you go. Um, and I think that is everything I have to say and that everything I know about commando locks at this point in time. Um, despite all of the things in this video, I still like them. I like them in the US. I like the cylinders. They're fun to pick. Um, and I can tell that they're, they're trying to do a good job. They're, they're trying to do quality and, um, you know, looking forward to seeing what they have next, have, uh, in their next model line. So any rate, um, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Alex. Have fun and please keep it legal. Cheers.